So I don't know if I'm more encouraged about Italy or discouraged after seeing this game. Encouraged in the sense that they find a way. And in a tournament like this, the more important thing is that you advance, and that's it. Now, in terms of what we expect from Italy, given what they were in the group stage, this was a step back. And a step back in the sense that after being so dominant in the first half, they seem very hesitant, very passive in the second half, not nearly the same level of possession, not nearly the same level of excitement in the attacking half. The playmakers didn't, get, didn't really get on the ball, and actually you found Italy chasing Austria a little bit, which we would never have said coming into this game. So for me, this is perhaps a wake-up call. If you needed one if you're Italy, and if you're really serious about contending late in this tournament, Maybe this is the one that you survive and it, it gives you a sense of where you really need to be in order to win the competition. Do you think that will be the case, Shaka? Because when it does come to a major tournament, there are always these hiccups along the way. In 2006, it was the same for Italy on the way to World Cup glory. Yeah, listen, as, as we talked about Italy coming into this tournament, the one criticism, and in fairness, is a good criticism to have, is that despite the form that they come into, all the games you look at in their run of, key, of wins and keeping clean sheets are, are against teams that you'd expect them to. And when they come up against a true test, we still weren't quite sure what Italy would show up. Now, I don't think anybody expected to be talking about Austria as that true test that the Italians come up against and, and how they'd fare. Yet, despite a good start in the first 45, you look at the second, and I cannot remember Bachmann making a save in, in the second 45. On the other side of that same coin, Austria had a goal disallowed, rightly so for offside, but it shows how thin those margins are between Italy crashing out against a team like Austria who came through the, a group stage against North Macedonia and Ukraine and didn't really uh, impress all that much, yet simply outworked Italy in, in the second half and, and almost proved the Italians uh, undoing. Against better opposition, if you have that same work rate, who knows how they fare. What do we read into Mancini's substitutions? Because <laughs> Persina came on and scored a goal in extra time. Ah. Chiesa came on in the 84th, and I was thinking... Uh -huh. He's a, a genius, late, Mancini. Well, yeah. Everybody knows that in this studio. On. Is it a genius stroke, or did he get lucky? Well... <laughs> ah. <laughs> well, 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 well. well this, this anti-Mancini narrative, well. you know, I don't, I don't create it. People just put me in this bubble. <laughs> no, obviously, in terms of substitution, you never know how it's going to go. I think he had the right intentions. He came on, and the players you bring on, you want them to make a difference. And ultimately, they did. So for him, you know, in this particular moment, it's a stroke of genius from a genius manager. Oh. But, you know, to talk about something which Shaka was mentioning there, I think we do deserve, need to give credit to Austria because they did play very, very well. But the, the thing that I've discovered, the thing that's alarming me the most is that at times today I thought Italy weren't great and they weren't behind. The score was nil-nil and they looked really, really poor in certain pockets. You know, overall, they, they did deserve to win. So what's, what are they going to be like if they ever go behind in this tournament? But then are those the teams when you're saying that they weren't great and it was still nil-nil where you think, oh, that's what champions do? That's how they can get through those tough times and come out on top? Possibly, possibly, and I'm sure down the line we'll see, since I, you know, I have got them going all the way. But the, <laughs> but the thing, Are you sure? Yeah, this is just hanging on my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your relationship with Mancini is very love-hate. It's, it's, very... it's not, it's just love. Oh. It's all love. Is it? He loved oh. me, and I loved him in, back. In a special way. Wow. In a very special way. Okay. In the same way like a, you know, a, a son loves his father-in-law. Oh, not father-in-law. Um, you know, well, anyway. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Clearly you got it under control. All right. I can't even fake it. Rattle! Hey, it's a therapy session or ESPN FC. No, well, <laughs> I tell you, I, I would have a therapy session with Mancini and saying, okay, look, I know you're a genius because you brought in Chiesa and he ended up scoring. But my question to him would be, as a therapist, Roberto, what were you waiting for? Mm. Your team was struggling with lack of pace, with the ability to actually turn Austria around, to have Austria concerned about you defensively. And yet, you took all the way to the 86th minute to bring Chiesa in, who, right away, he goes in and he's running in behind. Right away, he's pushing liner back. He's pushing the back line of Austria to the point to where now they can no longer just be on the front foot because there is a threat in behind that wasn't there before. Uh, I really think that Mancini gets it right in the sense that these guys make a difference, but I have my issues in terms of how late he made that decision to well, bring well, Chiesa in the game. Should he have started? And you wonder if he'll start the next game mm. now because Chiesa is a player that the Welsh team identified as being a huge thorn in their side mm. in that game. 
So do you think that he should have started this one? Well, I don't know that he should have started because you can say that Berardi has been outstanding over the course of the tournament. And so what message are you sending the, the other player that in the first couple of games looked as good as Berardi did? So I don't think starting would have been the answer. But certainly once you notice that the game is turning and it is getting away from you and that Austria has taken a step forward, you have to put a threat on the field that forces Austria to take a step, step back. And that didn't happen until Chiesa came on the field. Why do you think he waited so long, Shaka? Or do I, you think he knew something we didn't? Well, I, I, I find it a strange decision for, for all those same reasons. Now, keep in mind, we are talking about a manager who made a decision that changed the game and, and they won. But given that we're in the knockout stages of this competition and you wait until the 86 minutes to, to bring on an impact play, it says to me that you plan to win this game in extra time. Mm -hmm. And now that is a really odd approach in the knockout stages of, of a competition that you are prepared to send your team back out there for the remaining, for another 30 minutes uh, ahead of whoever, I, I can't remember what the draw is or when that tie is for, for the quarterfinal. It's in, in this format of, of the game, that's a huge risk. Nobody wants to be playing that extra 30 minutes. Nobody wants to be chancing going to penalty kicks. Yet bringing on an impact player in the 86 minute, says you plan to do exactly that. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.